Welcome to the 2021 Sigma Delta Chi Awards presentation. It is SBJ's virtual version of Oscar night. I am Matthew T. Hall, the 104th National President of the Society of Professional Journalists. And I'm Rebecca Aguilar, President-elect of the Society of Professional Journalists. Tonight, we are here to recognize the best among the nation's print, television, radio, and online reporting in 2020. The Sigma Delta Chi Award categories include breaking news, investigative reporting, features, documentaries, editorials, and photography, among others. The awards also honor individuals and news outlets for working to improve their communities through public service journalism. Thank you to all who chose to submit entries this year, and a special thanks to the more than 100 professional journalists around the country who volunteered their time talents and energy to help as judges. SPJ has a rich history. Sigma Delta Chi was created as a student organization in Greencastle, Indiana in 1909 and eventually grew into today's Society of Professional Journalists. We are the most broad-based journalism organization in the U.S. dedicated to defending and celebrating the First Amendment's guarantee to a free press while encouraging the highest standards of ethical behavior for journalists. We honor our heritage by retaining the original Greek letters in the awards we are about to present. Improving, celebrating, and protecting journalism is crucial to SPJ. We are champions for journalists, fighters for the First Amendment, stewards of ethical journalism, and producers of journalism's future. We advocate for journalists across the country and around the world who have remained dedicated to covering, informing, involving, and improving their communities amid a once in a century pandemic, a divisive national election, and an overdue racial reckoning that has led to serious reflection around the country and in our own newsrooms. Through these awards and other programs, SBJ will continue to champion diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging to make for a stronger society. Congratulations to all of this year's winners for demonstrating excellence in journalism while juggling all that you did. Here's how it will work tonight. We'll be announcing for the first time the SDX winners in each category, and you'll see some samples of some of their work. Any category not listed had no entries or the judges declared no winners. We'll also be presenting about halfway through the program, the MOE, that's our prize for the single most impressive student work of 2020, among thousands of entries. Before we begin the awards, I'd like to introduce our host, Nancy Cordes. She is CBS News White House correspondent based in Washington, D.C. Nancy will say a few words before our awards presentation begins. What a pleasure it is to be here tonight to celebrate excellence in journalism through the Society of Professional Journalists SDX Awards. I'm Nancy Cordes, Chief White House Correspondent for CBS News. And given the events of 2020, I don't think there's a journalist out there who doesn't know deeply in their hearts and minds that the work being done by the news media is vitally important. There's no question that 2020 was one of the most consequential years for journalists in decades in covering the stories of 2020, including the coronavirus pandemic, protests against racial injustice, a fierce presidential election, and much more locally, nationally, and globally, journalists across media demonstrated the power of good and ethical reporting. A lot of courage was shown in 2020. Journalists saw peers attacked in the streets. They risked their own health to report on the pain of the coronavirus pandemic and they stood strong while surrounded by threats. In spite of adhering to SBJ's code of ethics and our own truth-seeking instincts, we often fought accusations of misinformation, disinformation, and fake news. As journalists, we helped our audiences understand some of the most complicated stories of a generation. Sure, we always worked hard, but the economics of the news industry meant that many of us were covering issues outside of our normal beats. We got pretty good at adapting to new technologies and techniques and social media, sometimes channeling our inner MacGyver to turn our homes and offices into studios. Zooming used to be something only our camera people worried about, but in 2020, Zoom became a key tool in our journalistic utility belt. Adaptability became a core job requirement. 
A much needed reckoning also led us to cover communities differently and better. As journalists, we were reminded how much we can still grow personally and professionally. Newsrooms across the country are having new and compelling conversations about diversity, equity, and inclusion, and we're learning more about what the public expects from those who cover the news. With that new learning will come much needed change. With all of this going on, outstanding journalism emerged, lots of it, and the SDX awards we will be announcing here are only the tip of a very large iceberg. There were more than 1,200 entries in the SDX Awards this year, SPJ's highest in quite some time, and the choices were often between great and even greater. So thank you to the squadron of judges, more than 100 of them, who painstakingly reviewed the entries and politely, for the most part, debated and decided on the winners. Thank you also to the journalists and news staff members who took the time to submit all these entries. And of course, Congratulations to the winners. When you see your name displayed here tonight, I hope it does a few things. First, I hope it encourages you to take a moment to think about those who helped you get to where you are. The teachers, the family members, mentors, peers, and more who corrected, cajoled, inspired, and encouraged you. Second, I hope that hearing your name tonight brings to mind the lives you've impacted by your work. That cliche from It's a Wonderful Life that each life touches so many, that applies directly to journalists. And third, I hope the award makes you smile. It has been a tough several months, so a chance to smile should be seized and celebrated. Finally, I hope this award inspires you to do even more outstanding work in 2021 and beyond. After all is said and done, we are journalists and we get back to work. The next time you hit the streets, make that difficult call or bury yourself in data that someone doesn't want you to see or conceptualize that cartoon or line up that next photo, put on your headset or take the cue from your director. Know that you are valued, that you are needed, and that you make this country and this world a better place. And now, let's show our first set of winners of the Sigma Delta Chi Awards. For newspaper deadline reporting daily large circulation, the winner is the staff of the Star Tribune for The Killing of George Floyd. Its first story was published at 3.30 a.m. May 26th and updated 115 times online before the deadline package of May 27th. Especially impressive were clear and panoramic coverage of the incident, its social media dimension, the background of other unjustified police killings, and the coverage of the next day's protests and police confrontations. For deadline reporting daily circulation 1 to 100,000, the winner is the staff of the Tennessean for the Nashville Tornadoes, which told of the aftermath and struggles to cope from the natural disaster. The stories are rich in detail, visual graphics, and most importantly, humanity. For newspaper non-daily deadline reporting, the award goes to Carol Robinson of the Alabama Media Group for her breaking story on the Reuter Giles shooting. Giles, an eight-year-old boy, died from a shootout at the River Chase Galleria shopping mall on July 3, 2020. For breaking news photography in the large circulation category, Julio Cortez from the Associated Press is the winner for his photo of racial reckoning in America, Minneapolis, and George Floyd. The photo powerfully displays protest anger in the immediate aftermath of Floyd's death. George Floyd protest erupts in Philadelphia by Heather Khalifa from the Philadelphia Inquirer is the winner for breaking news photography in the small circulation category. The judges noted, this photo is well composed, full of action and beautiful. The photo was captured in broad daylight, but the smoke masks the sun, allowing daylight to trickle in at the sides, making for a truly amazing image. 
In the radio breaking news reporting, market 1 to 100, the winners are Doug Sovern, Keith Menconi, and Peter Finch of KCBS Radio for their coverage of the George Floyd protests. Our judges called it informative, real-time, on-the-ground reporting from a chaotic and fast-changing situation. Radio needs to engage the ear, but this story successfully gives listeners the sights and even the smells of the story. In market 101 plus for radio breaking news reporting, the award goes to the staff of WATD for their coverage of the Braintree Plaza shooting. There's only so much that can be done with a breaking news story, said the judges, where there's a danger to the reporter if they're too close. But this team was just where they needed to be and let listeners know there was a clear and present danger. For television breaking news coverage network, the winner is CBS News staff for George Floyd and the Forces of Change. The comprehensive coverage was thorough, exclusive at times, and filled with incredible perspective. The winner for television breaking news coverage all market sizes is WDSU staff for coverage of Hurricane Zeta. It not only provided clear, concise information under extreme circumstances, but also impressed the judges with fantastic use of modern technology to get sound of a woman trapped in her home. Getting back, though, to this situation here on Art Street, um, we were able to safely talk to uh, the woman who lives inside this home. Her name is Angela. She kind of stood at her door. We actually used our speaker phones to call and speak with her so that we could be a safe distance back. Um, she says her biggest concern, look, she and her husband can get out the back door, but her mom is actually in hospice care. Uh, she described her condition and why this is so scary because she cannot get out of this home right now. Take a listen. Well, she's 86. She has heart failure, so she's on hospice care. Um, and she can't move out of the bed. Um. In newspaper non deadline reporting, daily circulation 100,001 plus, the award goes to the Financial Times team for Inside China's Coronavirus Response. The international staff, including reporters inside the country, pounced on the coronavirus outbreak early and kept investigating with enterprise and persistence at great risk of illness and government persecution. Maricela's Last Breath by Rory Linane from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel is the winner in the small circulation category. Maricela Charez could have easily been forgotten and her story never told, but Linane made sure that didn't happen. This coverage goes beyond telling the story of a troubled teen who died tragically while incarcerated. It also exposes breathtaking flaws in the Wisconsin juvenile justice system in a well-crafted, moving narrative melded with strong reporting. For non-daily publication, this year's winner is Sean Donan of Bloomberg Businessweek for Economic Inequities. Many know about the rent-owner divide in housing, but this shows how other major forces intensified this divide. Donan brings it home by showing the actual impact on individuals in Cleveland. The reporting is filled with important data, but also powerful illustrative narratives. For Washington correspondence, the award goes to Sarah D. Wire of the Los Angeles Times for California and the CARES Act. This is how Washington reporting should be done, wrote the judges. The correspondent humanized the policies while holding power to account. No inside baseball, just what it means for California. It is the very essence of Washington correspondence done well. In foreign correspondence, the winner is Alice Su of the Los Angeles Times for Individual Lives Under China's Crackdown. It featured very descriptive writing and great reporting even in the face of resistance by Chinese officials. In magazine writing national circulation, the winner is Sarah McClure's The Amish Keep to Themselves and They're Hiding a Horrifying Secret for Cosmopolitan and Type Investigations. Based on a well-used year of reporting, McClure was able to document horrifying cases of sexual abuse, rape, and incest. In all, a searing investigative reporting piece and top-notch narrative magazine writing. For regional local circulation magazine writing, the SDX award goes to the Gateway Journalism Review staff for the 1857 Project, an ambitious, comprehensive, and commendable single-issue effort to confront the racial and racist past of the region. 
Of special note is the contribution of two student journalists, Amelia Blakely and Kayla Chamnez. This is long-form local journalism at its best. For informational graphics, the winner is the Los Angeles Times staff for Los Angeles County Police Killings Database, which guided readers through a harrowing database of 920 police killings in LA County over the past two decades. The Times also was transparent in its reporting, not only making the data available on its GitHub page, but also updating it for its audience. For online non-deadline reporting, the award goes to Justine Vanderloon of Type Investigations and Jen for the evidence against her. It impressed the judges for being a well-written, thoroughly reported, and compelling piece. While the subject, the killing of an abusive partner, isn't new, this story focuses on one case over many months to illustrate all the points other abuse stories merely describe. In online video, the winners are Laura Strickler, Lisa Riordian Seville, and Bianca Britton of NBC News for Brianna Taylor's Death, How a 26-Year-Old Black Woman Was Killed by Police. It is an amazingly detailed record that thoughtfully weaves together multiple media and graphics to help illustrate the story. A botch raid. An officer down. A 26-year-old woman shot dead by police. Is she alert? Able to talk to you? No, breathe. Her name, Brianna Taylor. So what happened? For data visualization, this year's winners are Al Shaw, Abram Lustgarden, and Jeremy W. Goldsmith for ProPublica's New Climate Maps Show a Transformed United States. The best data visualizations create choices for readers, and this group of visualizations gives them full control to skip around the country to find projections for extreme heat, sea levels, and wildfires. You could spend hours on this story and graphics, finding all kinds of local stories and angles. LSU Sexual Abuse by Kenny Jacoby, Nancy Armour, and Jessica Luther from USA Today wins in the Newspaper Investigative Reporting Daily Circulation 100,001 Plus category. This investigation has reverberated across several states and the fallout only increases by the day. It is a testament to the combined power of dogged journalism and brave sources. In the small daily circulation category for newspaper investigative reporting, the winners are Tony Cook, Emily Hopkins, and Tim Evans of the Indianapolis Star for Careless. This project took a deep dive into the exploitation of a troubling trend in which county hospitals were buying up nursing homes and siphoning federal funds, leaving nursing homes across the state strapped for resources. The project married deep data-driven reporting with writing that illuminated the profound human toll. In the non-daily publication newspaper investigative category, American City Business Journal staff and Portland Business Journal are the winners for One System, Unequal Access, How the U.S. Financial System is Failing Black Businesses. It offers a revealing look at institutional racism inside the U.S. banking system and the Federal Small Business Administration during a decade of economic boom with powerful sidebars focusing on individual minority entrepreneurs. The series resulted in state, federal, and corporate promises of remedial action. For magazine investigative reporting national circulation, the winners are Cam Simpson, Michael Smith, and Nasha Katan of Bloomberg Business Week for Addicted to Profit, which explains a very complicated issue in a way that makes it easy to follow and understand. The judges call this superb work and a powerful slap in the face to those who believe the U.S. government and businesses are working hard to shut down illegal drugs that are ravaging this country. In radio investigative reporting, the winners are Luke Runyon, Heather Sackett, and Brett Jaspers of KUNC for Cash Flows, How Investors Are Banking on the West's Water Scarcity. The reporters use sound bites effectively to tell a story that has large implications and deserves wider attention. But the farm never hit the market. Instead, Lopez sold the land and its water rights in an all-cash deal to a private equity fund with an office on Madison Avenue in downtown Manhattan. Honestly, any outsiders coming in and buying stuff 
especially a hedge fund from New York City. <laughs> it's scary to folks, you know. In television investigative reporting network syndication, the winners are Jim Axelrod, Peter Burgess, Len Tepper, and Michael Kaplan of CBS News, CBS This Morning for VA Ignores War's Signature Wound, Leaving Vets to Die. Our judges said this piece exemplifies the fourth estate. When the federal government is living up to the commitments it made, CBS News utilized rights guaranteed under the First Amendment to hold them accountable. For television investigative reporting, the award goes to Chris Vanderveen and Chris Hansen of KUSA-TV for Prone. KUSA and its sister stations located over 100 apparent cases of positional asphyxia, where police restrained a prone suspect who died unable to breathe. This exhaustive investigation showed that law enforcement has known for years the danger of keeping a suspect on his stomach while restrained. For online investigative reporting, Almudina Torrell, Patricia Clarembo, and Mauricio Rodriguez, Pons, of Univision News Digital are the winners for Potato Slaves, which featured riveting storytelling about an ignored community, immigrant workers at a potato plant fearful of reporting abuse. Said a judge, Univision should be applauded for their deep and thorough investigation using words, video, and audio to further buttress this important story. In the newspaper daily circulation 100,001 plus category, the winner is Jessica Contrera of the Washington Post for The Lives Up Ended Around a $20 Cheeseburger, a remarkably well-written and inventive feature story told through the lens of the restaurant food supply chain, the individuals and their families. For the daily circulation one 100,000 category, the award goes to Patrick Lohman of the Post Standard for Politics, COVID, and the Search for Truth, a Death in a Divided American Family. A respectfully reported and unflinchingly written piece, it eschews easy answers and gives dimension and perspective to the unfortunate, all too common phenomenon of families being torn apart by their deeply held convictions surrounding COVID-19. In the non-daily publication category, the winner is Victoria A. Brownworth of Philadelphia Gay News for COVID and the LGBTQ community, which explored the unique impact of the pandemic on the community through a variety of stories, including that of those who are disabled, people with health complications, and those experiencing food insecurity. Serenity by Jonathan Levinson of Oregon Public Broadcasting wins in Feature Photography Daily Circulation 100,001 Plus. Judges noted beautiful gritty images with nothing masked or edited to look more polished. In the Daily Circulation Small category, the winner is Jake May of the Flint Journal for Isolation, a beautiful series focused on faces showing isolation, confusion, and pain. The winner in sports photography is Robert Gauthier of the Los Angeles Times for Freeze Tag, which the judges called Splendid Peak Action Storytelling. It represents perfect timing and angled image of an LA Dodgers player completely and horizontally suspended in air while tagging out the Atlanta runner. The photo's special quality will doubtless find its way to sports museums and sports bar walls. In radio feature reporting market 1 to 100, the winners are Walter Ray Watson, Vicki Walton James and Debbie Elliott of NPR News for Mississippi Prisons in Crisis. With a great open and great sound bites, the organization of this really pulls a listener in. Our judges called it an excellent example of journalism exposing abuse of the disenfranchised. In Market 101 Plus, the winners are Emily Russell and Natasha Haverty from North Country Public Radio for New York's declining prison population threatens North Country towns. This thoughtful, multifaceted piece examines an issue many New Yorkers may not have thought about in depth. In TV network feature reporting, the award goes to Bill Whitaker, Rome Hartman, Sarah Kuzmarov, and Michael Monguya from CBS News 60 Minutes for Grizzlies, which judges said leaves the viewer both smarter and hopefully more concerned for our environment. The reporting here provides terrific insight into how the federal government is working to manage the grizzly population without harming humans. For TV feature reporting large market station, the winners are Boyd Huber and Chad Nelson of KIRE-TV for Land of 10,000 Stories. 
its series exploring the human spirit. The judges called these beautifully crafted stories with narrative and visual surprises. Digging for worms for a treat for Greenie. Holly Jorgensen has encounters of another kind. There he is. Hi, sweetie. Holly wasn't looking for a pal when she first locked eyes with the green sunfish. Hey, Greenie. Just off her dock. But he looked at me like I've never had a fish look at me. From fish eyes... Can you jump? ...came a friendship. There you go. He sure does seem like a special fish. You saw that. He just acts different from other fish. There you go. In TV feature reporting small market station, Trevor Keller and Ryan Ward of PBS Wisconsin win for You Are the Hero, a beautifully told and emotionally impactful story, original in concept and terrific in production. The vignettes of the children who have had heroes created are memorable for the artist, the parents of the children, and the viewer. Hello, I'm Erwin Gratz, president of the SPJ Foundation. We're an educational foundation that supports numerous projects for both SPJ and other journalism organizations across the country. We give thousands in grants each year toward efforts that seek to strengthen journalism and support journalists. I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't say you should check us out at www.spj.org foundation. And if you're so moved, donate to support our work. We're seeking to build a strong future for journalism, and your contributions are a very wise investment. I'd also like to call attention to the sponsors for this year's SDX Awards presentation. They include CBS News, NBC News, and tonight's premier sponsor, the Howard and Ursula Dubin Foundation. It's because of their support that we can highlight these very deserving winners. And it's now my pleasure to announce the Best in Show winner for our annual Mark of Excellence Awards. It's a comprehensive awards program for student journalism. We had over 3,000 entries this year, recognized hundreds of winners at the regional level and dozens who won national honors for their categories. From all of those, we've identified the one that stood above the rest and will give them the MOE. It's my privilege now to tell you about the winner the 2020 MOE goes to the staff of the Howard Center for Investigative Journalism at Arizona State's Cronkite News. In their online news reporting entry, Operation Agent Touch, the team investigated and reported on how the documentation by Homeland Security agents in government reports on sex trafficking led to the dropping of charges against suspects. Congratulations on this outstanding, important entry. And now, Back to the remaining SDX Awards. In radio documentaries, one to 100 market, the winners are Maria Hanehosa, Julieta Martinelli, Diane Sylvester, and Marlon Bishop from Latino USA for The Moving Border. This boots on the ground reporting from numerous locations made this story exciting and suspenseful. The judges called it heartbreaking, saying it gives the listener a real sense of the difficult life of an asylum seeker. Pat Duggins, Guy Busby, and Lynn Oldshue of Alabama Public Radio are the winners in the 101 plus market category of radio documentaries for Oil and Water 10 Years Later, which offers a thorough look at the economic devastation of the 2010 Gulf oil spill by re-interviewing people spoken to when the event unfolded. The remnants of the massive drilling rig Deepwater Horizon that exploded Tuesday night and sunk below the surface of the Gulf yesterday morning. After it sank, there was a... Ten years after the BP oil spill, we sat down with Dr. Powers at his office in Birmingham. Even a decade later, Powers says, it was the stress among Gulf Coast residents he remembers most. Because you have to remember, there was the fire, and there was the release, and then there was a period where there was no oil, but it was coming. And so people had a lot of time to start really worrying about that. 
In network TV documentaries, the award goes to Alicia Santo and Elaine McMillan Sheldon from The Marshall Project and Frontline for Tutwiler, which the viewers found emotional and intimate, but in a way that felt respectful and not gratuitous. It opens the viewer's eyes to the heartbreaking reality for pregnant inmates. For television documentaries all market sizes, this year's winners are Cammie Horton, Dan Evans, Todd Sonfleet, and Nadine Jelsing of Oregon Public Broadcasting for In the Shadow of Fairview, which shined a light on the shameful and horrific conditions of people with disabilities. While making good use of archival footage, FOIA documents, and old newspaper clippings, the most compelling information were the testimonials of former patients and staff members who later became advocates. In editorial writing with daily circulation of 100,001 plus, the winner is Robert Green of the Los Angeles Times. Green casts a clear and critical eye on the criminal justice system, sounding early warning on the impact of COVID-19 in prisons and blasting life without parole for juveniles, among other systematic problems. His writing is direct, sometimes damning, and builds the case in each piece. Jeffrey Garrett of Palestine Herald Press is the winner in the small daily editorial writing category for Texas Prison Negligence Threatens County's Health. These editorials and others convince the state to expand COVID-19 testing throughout Texas among inmates and corrections officers. Clear and concise, these editorials both broke news and commented on it, concluding with powerful calls for action. In the editorial cartooning category with newspaper circulation 100,001 plus, the winner is Matt Davies of Newsday. The judges said, Davies makes his point with a whisper rather than a shout, and thus he stood out. Plus, he's just so damn funny. In newspaper circulation 1,100,000, the winner is freelancer Nancy Ohanian for The Trump Years, which the judges found unique and powerful. At one glance, you see the message, but you can't look away. For general column writing with daily circulation 100,001 plus, the winner is James Rosen of the Detroit Free Press, offering riveting writing from a longtime Washington correspondent. His broad knowledge and understanding of Washington politics comes into play in well-written, thorough, energizing work. For newspaper general column writing in the daily circulation 1 to 100,000 category, the winner is Kyle Whitmere of the Alabama Media Group for his columns on life, politics, and corruption. His fearless willingness to take on Alabama's sacred cows is laudable. The writing is strong and entertaining, and his personal column on Ruth Bader Ginsburg's gift to him and his father is a revelation. Sports of the Times by Kurt Steeter of the New York Times is the winner in sports column writing daily circulation 100,001 plus. The judges noted his deep reporting and thoughtful writing in columns about the first person with Down syndrome to compete in an Ironman triathlon, a football coach who also serves as a Minneapolis police officer, and a powerful piece about running through neighborhoods as a black man. In the 1 to 100,000 sports column writing category, the award goes to Tom Archdeacon of the Dayton Daily News. Demonstrating a keen eye for detail and a nose for news, Archdeacon's columns are linked by their roots in sports, but from there, they venture to astonishingly diverse pathways. In online column writing, the winner is Chandra Bazoko of Gannett More Content Now for The Outlaw, Insider Takes on Criminal Justice which according to the judges, contained masterful writing on compelling eye-opening subjects. She knows how to grab the reader and how to tell the stories only she can tell. In public service in newspaper journalism large category, the winner is the staff of the Star Tribune for The Killing of George Floyd. The reporting reflected the local grief, anger, and fear that fueled riots and shocked the conscience of the nation. And it was done without losing sight of who Floyd was and what he represented. Pandemic, protests, politics, a year in the center of three storms by the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel staff wins in the public service and newspaper journalism small category. 
The series takes the issues of the day and handles each in a straightforward and comprehensive way, including interviews with experts and regular citizens to pull the package together. In the non-daily category, the award goes to the staff of the Philadelphia Gay News for Remember Them. Our judges noted the staff did an excellent job without being exploitative of telling the stories of people lost to hate crimes. For public service and magazine journalism with national circulation, Maria Aspen of Fortune is the winner for The Risky Business of Breast Implants. This well-researched, concisely written, hard-hitting article was able to achieve change for those affected by implants as seen through the actions and decisions of the FDA after its publication. For public service and radio journalism market 1 to 100, the winners are Margaret J. Cross and Liz Reed of WESA for Land and Power. The judges noted that the report is immediately engaging and keeps the pace throughout in telling the story of a threatened apartment complex, how cities change, and what this means for residents. In the Market 101 Plus division, the North Country Public Radio staff wins for Child Care in Crisis. This multi-layered series, noted the judges, had an impact on an issue that was present before the pandemic and worsened during it. The big problem is child care was a crisis before the pandemic. According to a recent study, almost all of the North Country is what experts call a child care desert, meaning there's more demand for child care than there are slots at licensed providers. Over the next two weeks, we're going to look in depth at child care problems in the North Country, talking with parents, child care centers and experts. And we're going to start by hearing from you. Almost 150 people filled out our survey about child care. In the TV Journalism Network category, the award goes to Bill Whitaker, Sam Hornblower, Emilio Almonte, and Matthew Donowski of CBS News 60 Minutes for Opioid Playbook, featuring top-notch reporting and storytelling about a practice that led to the deaths of many and the addiction of others. It quite possibly saved lives. In public service and television, the winners are Chris Vanderveen, Chris Hansen, AJ Legault, and Megan Nergemeyer of KUSA-TV for Prone, 107 Deaths at Least, which featured exceptional investigation and reporting on the positional asphyxia deaths across the country, disproportionately impacting minorities and the mentally ill. In the online category, the award goes to the staff of the New York Times for tracking the coronavirus. Utilizing more than 70 researchers, reporters, developers, and visual journalists, it allowed readers to search COVID-19 cases and trends in every county. It's been cited in more than 60 peer-reviewed specific papers and the federal agencies as well as local and state officials in formulating policies. For public service and newsletter journalism, this year's winner is the staff of Everyday Health Group for Everyday Health Coronavirus Updates, which featured very strong content covering relevant topics but differing enough so it's not stale. Creative, unique story ideas and appealing, inviting layout are major pluses. The John C. Enslin Award for Podcast Excellence goes to CNN Audio for Coronavirus, Fact versus Fiction which the judges described as simple, powerful, effective, and extremely authoritative and informative. Through interviews, the podcast does a great job of explaining difficult subjects to lay people and breaking down information about the coronavirus. For collaborative journalism, this year's winners are University of Maryland's Howard Center for Investigative Journalism and Capital News Service, University of Oregon, Stanford University, Arizona State University, the University of Arkansas, Boston University, and University of Florida for their countrywide series of stories, Nowhere to Go, on the homeless that powerfully tells an important and underreported story. In fact-checking, the award goes to the staff of factcheck.org for Trump on the Stump, which according to judges included all the necessary elements, originality, significance, depth, sourcing, logic, and clarity while also making the reader want to read on. The authors include source links and tons of important information relevant to the 2020 U.S. election. This year, we added a new video game reporting category. The winners are Zach Toombs, 
Matt Pitch, and Jennifer Smart of Newsy for Next Level. One of the judges noted the D&D episode was especially good, covering a difficult but important topic and included diverse viewpoints. They added, I loved how the Animal Crossing story used the game itself to tell the story of the game's impact. Animal Crossing might seem like an odd choice for digital hangouts. There's only so many virtual furniture options and pre-programmed emotes to work with, after all. But engaging with those limitations is actually part of the appeal. Trying to set up, say, a spa area with whatever bits of furniture you can cobble together forces players to really get invested in their surroundings. Animal Crossing and other games kind of like it are playful spaces and they are interactive. So they allow us to actively engage with others and have these shared experiences in ways that you don't have necessarily if you're sitting on Zoom. In immersion journalism, the award goes to the Tennessean staff for Inside the Storm, a multifaceted, in-depth look at the impact of seven tornadoes on March 3rd that cut across more than 200 miles. Extremely helpful, especially given the real-time accounts by forecasters and meteorologists. It also provided insight as to why forecasts are tricky and often wrong. For specialized journalism site, the award goes to the staff of the COVID Tracking Project at The Atlantic, an ambitious project that became a definitive source in an incredibly uncertain time. The commitment to inclusivity in coverage and contributors was outstanding and especially needed for this particular project. This year, the awards committee added a category for inequalities in society. It recognizes outstanding work about systemic racism and or other examples of inequality or bias about but not limited to race, religion, or gender identity. This year's winner is the Reuters team for American Injustice, a thorough, painstaking work dissecting fundamental flaws in our criminal justice system, exposing the structural imbalances and the abuses of power, and explaining why qualified immunity matters so much. It expertly illustrates how marginalized members of society suffer and told hard truths about America that we need to know and understand. This year, we took the step to build an entire slate of categories devoted to coverage of the COVID-19 pandemic. It's because of journalists like you that the public came to understand the dangers, tragedy, and pain caused by COVID-19, came to understand the virus's disproportionate effect on and among communities of color and came to understand the amazing science that has led to so many of us getting vaccinated in such a short period of time. I'd like to take a moment to thank the medical and public health officials, the scientists, and all the essential workers who helped us reach this point, including journalists. And I'd like to take a moment to ask that you remember the hundreds of thousands of people who died during this pandemic and their family, friends, and coworkers. Lastly, to all those who have been vaccinated to help eradicate this pandemic that has caused such pain to so many, I say thank you. If you aren't vaccinated, please get your shot soon. Here are our honorees. For COVID-19 breaking news coverage, the award goes to the staff of NBC Nightly News for Inside the COVID-19 Pandemic. From Brazil to New Orleans and New York to Los Angeles, each correspondent had compelling stories from people affected by the deadly disease. As it has been virtually every night since February, our lead story tonight is the coronavirus outbreak. The headlines only grow more worrisome. Today, the World Health Organization officially calling it a pandemic. Literally, the whole world is talking about this outbreak. None of us is unaffected by its impact. As anchor of this broadcast, I want you to know we're focused on bringing you the facts and trying to answer the questions on your minds. The last thing we want to do is unnecessarily alarm people. But this is serious stuff, and we are going to continue to follow this story wherever it takes us. For COVID-19 breaking news photography, the award goes to Carolyn Cole of the Los Angeles Times for COVID-19's toll on Latino communities. Only a photographer who has won the trust and respect of their subjects could get this close to tragedy. The results should be shown to anyone who doubts the horrible toll this disease has taken. 
What Coronavirus Job Losses Reveal About Racism in America by Lena V. Groger of ProPublica wins for COVID-19 Data Visualization. A judge noted that this is some of the best work I've ever seen on filtering with a line chart. Being able to filter the opening graphic by demographic data was pure magic and tied together three of the big issues of 2020, the pandemic, race, and job losses. It's one of the few scroll-telling stories and graphics where I wasn't constantly backtracking. For COVID-19 digital video, the CNN staff wins for Go There, Fear and Anxiety in Epicenter of Wuhan Coronavirus Outbreak. In This Was Early in the Pandemic, CNN pushed for access, documented it, and presented it powerfully online. For COVID-19 editorial cartooning, the winner is the Reveal staff, the Nib staff, and artist T. Bowie for Invulnerable. Building her cartoons out of stories from a team of reporters, T. Bui straddles the line between editorial cartooning and graphic novel, and it works so well and so impactfully, the judges said it led them to wonder, why aren't there more T. Buies? For COVID-19 editorial writing, the award goes to Michael Doby of Newsday. This series shares a common theme, hope. While acknowledging the difficult circumstances, the writing is forward-looking and seeking to embrace opportunities, taking as a given that we will survive. The staff of Lead Stories and Dean Mill win the COVID-19 fact-checking category for Fighting the Infodemic, which included fantastic sourcing to make for a highly credible report chock full of details on Facebook fact-checking. The winner for COVID-19 feature photography is Meredith Coet of Time for The Fight of Their Lives. The judges had no idea how Coet managed to shoot inside a hospital struggling with COVID-19 and achieve both compositional and technical excellence. On top of everything else, the lighting is stunning and drives home just how devastating this disease really is. For newspaper feature reporting, the award goes to the staff of Searchlight New Mexico for Hitting Home, the pandemic's indelible impact on five New Mexico towns. The reporters traveled to five disparate towns and burrowed deeply into what the pandemic has done to ordinary New Mexicans, making for compelling, memorable reporting. The winner in COVID-19 television feature reporting is the staff of NBC News MSNBC's On Assignment with Richard Engel for Mexico's Hidden Toll, which offered a clear, comprehensive overview of pandemic life. It featured stunning images and tight, active writing that showed this to be an exemplary piece that ought to be part of the college curriculum on active storytelling. For COVID-19 general column writing, the winner is Steve Politi of New Jersey Advanced Media for The Coronavirus Pandemic in New Jersey. Politi covers the pandemic with sensitivity and heart-touching stories about everyday people impacted by the virus. His ability to tell their tale pulls you in from start to finish. For informational graphics, the winner is the infographics team of the South China Morning Post for its explanatory graphics collection. These included a complex explanation of how the coronavirus spread in Hong Kong, a strong one-page visual explaining the virus's impact on the food supply chain, and a vibrant country-by-country -country testing timeline that judges called one of the strongest graphics we've seen the entire pandemic. For magazine writing on COVID-19, the award goes to Simon Schuster of Time for The Fight of Their Lives. This incredibly poignant and well-written piece is concise, moving, and informative. It lays bare the sheer human cost of this pandemic. Pandemic Profiteers by the staff of ProPublica wins in the online non-deadline reporting COVID-19 category. The series of stories included several groundbreaking investigative articles that illustrated major problems related to government contracting and the coronavirus. Some of these articles were cited by and carried in other news media. For COVID-19 non-deadline reporting in a large circulation daily, the winner is the Associated Press staff for America in Pain, a sweeping yet intensely local project on the impact of the pandemic across the United States. It has solid, detailed reporting and clear writing showcasing big-picture journalism combined with moving personal stories on the pandemic's human toll. The winner in the small daily circulation category is Natasha Lindstrom, Jamie Martinez, and Susan McFarland of Trib Total Media for Tragedy at Brighton. COVID-19 hit few places harder than elder care facilities. 
these reporters pulled back the curtain into one of the worst outbreaks at a facility early on during the pandemic. While it's notoriously difficult to get information from healthcare facilities, they were able to use sourcing to talk with people inside and piece together what occurred to let the new coronavirus spread. For COVID-19 non-deadline reporting in a non-daily publication, the Bloomberg News staff is the winner for Pandemic Warnings Unheeded, an exhaustively reported and engagingly presented real-time account of a pandemic as it unfolded. Bloomberg took full advantage of its global reach and expertise and all multimedia platforms to provide what is truly the first draft of history as it happened. For COVID-19 online column writing, the winner is Ernest Owens of Philadelphia Magazine. A judge was so compelled by Owens' work that they went to read more of his columns outside of the COVID-19 category, adding, he tells the stories of his community with the feel of an old school columnist needed during the COVID times. Owens made us feel part of the community and brought humanity to his column. For COVID-19 radio feature reporting, the award goes to Martha Bebinger of WBUR for another COVID-19 medical mystery, Patients Post Ventilator Who Don't Wake Up, which through smart use of sound bites helped listeners understand what medical staff and families go through. So much quality work out there and so much to celebrate and so much to look forward to as we're already almost halfway through 2021. Entries will be accepted for the 2021 SDX Awards in November. So stay connected to SBJ to learn more. Thank you for allowing me to join you tonight. Get some rest, stay hydrated and stay inspired. I'm Nancy Cordes of CBS News signing off.